I want to test it, right? Make sure that my logic works the way that I want it to. So what I'm going to do is come up here and fire up the simulator. So it brings up a completely separate application. Notice that it does appear down here as a separate application to the simulator as or, or by itself. The simulator is not running right now. Um, just a brief overview. I can select the inputs right here, and it will cause the um, you know to, them to turn on just as if it was a push button. Affect the logic that's running in the processor. Turn the outputs on that are associated right here. I did have a program in here, and I had some stuff that I was doing with what's called wire mapping. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the simulator completely. You'll get this dialog that says you're going to clear the program and any kind of configuration. Yes, I want to do that. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can actually make outputs turn inputs on. This is called um, a map or wire table. So let's just say when output, and I don't want zero, I want output one. When output one comes on down here in the logic, I want to be able to turn input two on and I can actually create even a delay right here, which is really cool. So if I want to wait five seconds between the time that this output came on and turn this input on, I can create that delay. So that's our wire mapping. And then you'll see to know that you've got some kind of mapping associated with it. You'll see actually see the wiring in the in the simulator here. Um, I did forget a bit of logic here, so I'm going to go back in order to make this flash more than one time. I need to put a not done for timer two right here, right? So you guys can look at the logic. But we'll... So that should, I think that should work the way that we want it to. So back to the simulator. Um, we've got our wire mapping done. Let's go ahead and power on the device. Oh no. Oh, this is horrible when you're having a seminar and you get an error message like this. and. Ladies and gentlemen, we know how to fix this because we run into this a couple of times, and that's what, why we left it. Um, it's something that seems to be occurring on new installations. It's a very, very simple thing to fix. So what I'm going to do is hit OK. And then um, the slide deck that you actually are downloading or have downloaded actually has a slide. We're going to see that in a second when we come back to it. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this. It's just simply go to the Rockwell software folder. There is what's called the Factory Talk Admin Console. You select Network. And then you select the Communications tab. We come over here and select the Ethernet driver. I right mouse click on the Ethernet driver, select Properties. I select the advanced tab, and the only thing I have to do to fix that error is to uncheck listen on Ethernet IP encapsulation ports. We did this, and we actually kept uh, the error in there, tried to figure out if we wanted to make it error or not for you guys so you could see it. But here's what I'm thinking. If you just saw me fix it and you run into that same situation, you're going to know exactly what to do. So let's try to power our simulator back on again. So we're going to power on. And no error this time. We actually fixed it. So um, good luck to you guys. If you run into that, you're going to know how to fix it now. So our simulator is up and running. Now we're going to actually do a download. So I'm going to go back to the Micro 850 homepage. And I'm going to do a download. Now, Watch what happens at the bottom of the window. This is kind of where our output or what's going on, it kind of tells us what's going on when we're doing this. So build started. The first thing it does is it compiles the program. It actually does a build of the program. So you'll see that uh, build time took 3.8 seconds and it was, succeed it was successful. If you have any errors, syntax errors in your programs, you get contextual errors, which you can come down here in the output window, click on, and it will take you to that area of the program, which has the error, right? So it went ahead and say, okay, no errors, you're good to go. Select what driver you're going to use to download to the simulator. Uh, this, is, this is not intuitive to me. I would think that it would be a different driver, but we're actually using the Ethernet driver to download to the simulator. So you can see uh, that is the simulator right there. We'll select it like we would normally do on a standard download to a controller. And it's, it's working, so just kind of 
look down here, you'll see some flashing. So one of the coolest things about CCW is it has this ability that is actually kind of complicated and difficult to do in any of our other editors with any of our other processors. When you do a download, it actually prompts you to, uh, it, to do you want to download the code and not download the project values? What that would do, would it would if you had values inside the controllers, variable tag values, you could download just the code and those values would not be overwritten. And so in that situation, you would select download. Uh, if you want to download your project values, what you've already set up in your projects to the controller, then you can hit download project values. And that's what we're going to do. We don't really have any values in the program, but that's kind of a cool feature. There's the um, data preservation tool in 5000 that allows you to do that, but that's a completely external um, utility. So it's just kind of built into CCW. A really cool feature if you need to maintain the, the data inside your controller. So you get the obligatory, you're done. Do you want to go to remote run? And you select yes. And the latter window actually appears when you're done.